The Washington Times is a far right wing publication, and they published, honestly, the worst article I've ever read this week. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So Jimmy Kimmel gave an emotional uh, monologue the other night where he explains how his kid was born with a heart condition, and of course the doctor saved him, but if he was poor, he wouldn't have been able to afford the surgery. And, you know, this is, that weight on his mind, and he's like, that's fucked up, man. Like, if, so if I wasn't Jimmy Kimmel, and I was Jimmy Kimmler, um, he the kid would have been screwed, or I would have had to gone bankrupt to pay for the kid's surgery. So, he basically took this personal story, he teared up, and he was calling for increased funding for healthcare, and he also went as far as to say, look, this isn't even a partisan issue. Uh, I want solidarity and love and brotherhood among Americans, where certain things are off the table, and one of them we say is, we're gonna make sure you're alright if you get sick. So it was a really touching moment, uh, but Charles Hurt, that's his real name, Hurt, appropriate last name, as you'll see in a second, of the Washington Times, he had something to say about this. Look at the title of his piece. Shut up, Jimmy Kimmel, you elitist creep. I can't, I can't get over the irony of that, man. Jimmy Kimmel is the elitist creep? <laughs> Your headline would show that you are the elitist creep. Jimmy Kimmel's like, yeah, man. We should all pitch in and help out each other. Wouldn't that be great? Just like basic, fundamental human decency and this touching story from my personal life about my kid being sick leads me to come out here and feel compelled to tell everybody about this. Elitist creep, you want to help people? Puh. No, an elitist creep would be somebody who looks down their nose at others and is condescending and is like, please, I, I, I only care about myself. What an idiot this guy is! Okay, but we're, we- I just gave you the title. Let's dive into the article. He says, This is why America hates Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why America hates Hollywood. Uh, late night funny man Jimmy Kimmel delivered a heart-wrenching monologue Monday night that every mother and every father could relate to. In the emotion-drunk moments last month, after the birth of their son, still in the hospital room surrounded by nurses and euphoric family, uh, he and his wife watched their boy turn blue and got the terrifying news that something was wrong with his heart, or lungs, or both. Mr. Kimmel called it the longest three hours of my life, as more nurses and doctors and machines crowded into the room, uh, and his little infant boy was cut open for the emergency open heart surgery, which, thank the Lord, was successful. Understandably, Mr. Kimmel could not get through the story without breaking down in tears uh, throughout the telling. And then his monologue went horribly awry. Here was uh, this moment highlighting the preciousness of life, the heroism of nurses, the unmatched expertise of surgeons, and the magical power of family. And what is the point of it all for Jimmy Kimmel? Politics. Grubby, dirty politics. I want to say one other thing, Mr. Kimmel said, after thanking all the people who just saved his baby uh, son's life, spared his family from a lifelong misery and supported them, all through the whole traumatic ordeal. President Trump last month proposed a $6 billion cut in funding to the National Institute of Health. The funny man continued, and thank God our congressman made a deal last night to not go along with that. It was suddenly as if instead of bringing forth into life an exquisite bundle of joy, Mr. Kimmel had handed a stupid golden statue, had been handed a stupid golden statue, and as if at the Oscars, the dirty, self-absorbed, narcissistic exhibitionist could not help himself but step into the Klieg lights and start blubbering about politics. All right, let me pause for a second. Everything is politics. Everything is politics. So what do you mean, like, oh, he, he started talking politics. When you uh, wake up in the morning and take your medication, Charles Hurt, is that his name, Charles Hurt? I think it's, whatever. Mr. Hurt. Um, you know that's politics, right? Because those pills you took went were approved by the FDA. There are regulations to make sure that those pills are safe. When you have your breakfast cereal, there are laws about how that milk is made, how it's regulated. When you drive on the road, that's politics. There's a speed limit. The speed limit was, you know, debated. The infrastructure was paid for by tax dollars. 
everything about every aspect of life is politics, which is one of the main reasons why I'm really interested in politics, because it's all encompassing. It's how we organize a society, what rules there are, what we fund, what we don't fund, what we leave to the private market, what we leave for the public sector. So for him to use that, he thinks it's like a trump card argument against what Jimmy Kimmel is saying, like, there he goes again, politics. Not only does that mean nothing, that means less than nothing. You're not saying anything. It's like you're arguing, ah, Jimmy Kimmel, there he goes again, talking about things. Why do you talk about things, Jimmy? Your argument means nothing. Politics, there it is, politics. As if he can, like, spike the fucking football and do a victory lap. I just accused him of doing politics, so aren't I great? And by the way, this idiot's even dumb enough to bring up the specific fact that Jimmy Kimmel raised. Jimmy Kimmel was like, hey, isn't it fucked up that Trump wanted to cut the NIH by 18%, cut it $6 billion worth, and isn't it great that the congressman in the last minute budget deal actually increased funding for the NIH slightly, thereby saving scientific research, and yes, kids, they're about 40% of the people who are benefited by the research the NIH does are children! So the guy brings up the fact that Trump wanted to cut it six billion dollars and that would have hurt kids. And the guy's like, oh, there you go again, politics. Yeah, but those are facts, you idiot! You gotta actually rebut the argument. You can't just have this condescending snark like, nah, there he goes again, politics. Nah. Yeah, but why don't you address the argument? He hasn't, because he can't. How are you gonna address the argument? All right, let me give you more. Um, they actually increase funding by $2 billion, and I applaud them for doing that because more than 40% of the people, this is what I just told you, uh, who would have been affected by those cuts uh, to the National Institute of Health are children. And it would have a major impact on a lot of great places, including the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, he sobbed, which is so unbelievably sad to me. After his slobbering wet kiss to, the, to federal bureaucracy, Mr. Kimmel then went squealing on about Obamacare and how insurance companies, the government, and your neighbors should all be forced to pay for everybody else's health care. Easy thing to say for a gazillionaire from Hollywood. I mean, really, Jimmy, does your newborn child not mean more to you than petty politics? How do you look at the miracle of your child and think, partisan politics? That is not to say he didn't also lie and claim to be above partisan politics, even as he, as he was pushing exactly that. Quote, let's stop this nonsense, he said. This isn't football. There are no teams. We are the team. It's the United States. Don't let the, their partisan squabbles divide us on something ver every decent person wants. Yes, that's right. He just had a kid, and the kid nearly died, and he wants you to know that if you are not for bloated federal bureaucracy, socialized medicine, higher taxes, and tons of more debt piled onto your grandchildren, then you are not a decent person. Actually, Jim, if you were a decent person, you would shut your fat trap about partisan politics and go care for your kid who just nearly died, you elitist creep. Jimmy Kimmel is pointing out the fact that his kid would be dead if it wasn't for the NIH funding, specifically the hospital where his kid was taken care of. And he's saying, I want everybody to have the quality health care that I had, and that requires funding. And he's even saying, what I interpreted Kimmel as saying is, like, look, man, if you have to raise my taxes to pay for it, raise my taxes. But this guy, he's like making it seem like Kimmel's doing this, saying something that's like against the average guy. No, he's helping the average guy. He's helping the little guy. You're not helping the little guy. And look at the gross framing he did here. He, I like how he goes, yeah, oh, that's what you're calling for a bloated federal bureaucracy. You're taking this heart, this terror, this, uh, this touching moment with your kid, this terrible incident, and you're using it to push for a bloated federal bureaucracy. Why are you framing it like that? You're framing it. Like, he didn't frame it like that. You framed it like that. He didn't call for, you know, a federal, a bloated bureaucracy. Hey, let's give, you know, the NSA untold billions of dollars to spy on all of us. He didn't say that. Hey, let's waste $7 trillion in Iraq. He didn't say that. Hey, let's, you know, blow money on uh, corporate welfare for ExxonMobil and have a real bloated bureaucracy. He didn't say that. He said, I, specifically healthcare is what's important. And if we're prioritizing in a society, in a country, what we spend our money on, wouldn't healthcare be on the top of the list? But no, this idiot frames it as, um, I want to give you the quote one more time because it's so gross. 
socialized medicine, higher taxes, and tons more debt piled onto your grandchildren. Or what he's calling for is, uh, the U.S. should have a system like every other modern nation has, where healthcare is off the table. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, notice, you never hear these conservatives say, you know, oh, is that what you want? You want a bloated federal bureaucracy, socialized roads, higher taxes, and tons more debt piled on your kids? They don't say that about roads because in their mind, and everybody's mind, it's grandfathered in. Like, well, of course we're going to use taxes for roads because to not do that would be fucking crazy. But with healthcare, they're still stuck in like the year 1806. And he's like, ah, bloated bureaucracy, socialized medicine. Guys, the facts show, it's not me speaking, it's the World Health Organization speaking. It's, um... There was another study done in 2014, which found that the U.S. is last among developed nations when it comes to healthcare because we have rapacious for-profit uh, middlemen taking their cut. So they're price gouging us. The little guy gets screwed. How would we fix that? By doing a single-payer system, by taking tax money and using that to cover people and their healthcare expenses. And you don't even need to necessarily raise taxes. You could just cut out, if you cut the military budget, you could fund it. If you do, there's a million ways to fund it because we waste so much money on nonsense, whether it be corporate welfare, the military industrial complex, or Wall Street bailouts, or whatever it is. You, can, you don't even need to raise taxes to get single-payer health care. But this guy is a sleazy liar who's insinuating, if not just flat out saying, yeah, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, elitist creep. He wants to, like, pile debt onto your kids and have socialized medicine and higher taxes. You're adding all of that onto what he said. You're strawmanning him. He didn't say that. What he said very simply was, I want everybody to have the same care that my kid had, and it's fucked up that, you know, people treat this as a partisan issue. He's saying it shouldn't be a partisan issue. We should take care of our kids. We should have health care for people. And he gets called an elitist creep for doing it by an elitist creep. That's what you are, Mr. Hurt. And what a fucking appropriate last name that is. Mr. Hurt. Because he can't wait to hurt people with his... HIS politics. Like, he acts like... Jimmy Kim... Eh, boo, talking politics. Your argument is so stupid, it can be flipped back on you like that. Oh, there goes Hurt again, talking politics. Bleh. The problem isn't that you're talking politics. The problem is that your politics are idiotic. The problem is that your politics rejects every empirical study and objective fact about healthcare in the modern world that we know of. So spare me your condescending, pedantic, childish moralizing. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about on this issue, but you, you still have this smug approach to discussing a real serious issue and smearing a guy who's using a personal incident to call for the betterment of the healthcare system for everybody. You're the definition of an elitist creep. Oh, what, you wanna like make lives better for people by like having good healthcare and not cutting the funding for that? Oh, how gross is that? Obviously, you're a real person and an average Joe and a regular guy if you don't wanna fund healthcare and you want poor people and middle class people to not have the same access to healthcare that you do. Worst article I've ever read. Don't think that's hyperbole.